You're going to talk about tourism in Torrevieja. You need to come to the place where it has the most tourists. So there's been a lot of news in the UK and I've seen an article in the Telegraph back home in the UK this morning. I didn't read it all because I wasn't going to pay to read the, the article. But the headline said it all. Anti-tourist demonstrations in Spain, once again. And we're talking about Malaga this time. And it's not really anti-tourist demonstrations. It is anti-Airbnb. Will there be anti tourist demonstrations here in Torrevieja. Well in this video I'm going to explore the tourism sector in Torrevieja, what it means to Torrevieja and also I'm going to explore the rental property market and there lies the problem here in Torrevieja is the rental property market and it's the same everywhere. So first of all this video is not going to be a dig at tourists because this area needs tourists. It's as simple as that. Torrevieja is a town that is run on tourists both international and domestic. Come July and August, come definitely August, the place is taken over by people from Madrid. Every bank holiday in Madrid, the place is taken over by people from Madrid. And then you're going to say, ah, but it's just English tourists that they're having a dig at. That is the English media making you think that Spain doesn't want you. So first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit of history about my experience with Airbnb, because ultimately, this is what this is about. It's not about tourists, tourism, it's about Airbnb. Now back home I'm from a place called Fife in Scotland and there's little villages, Crail, Anstruther, um, etc. up that way towards St Andrews where the home of golf is, a game that I don't play but never mind. And in those little towns there has been areas that have been completely overrun by Airbnb. There are towns, there are streets where there's only two people staying full time and that has an adverse effect to the local population. One especially in Pitt and Wien, it's a fishing village. A bit like Torrevieja, well it's a bit smaller than Torrevieja, but it is a fishing village. And people have been outpriced within their own local village due to Airbnb and people from outside buying property. And you say, but that can only be a good thing. Well, no, it can't. Sometimes it's a bad thing. When people that are local, and this is how it's going to affect you, hang with this video and watch to the end and I'll give you what my, why I think that Airbnb is good and bad, but my experience is, is you have little villages where people cannot live and work. They cannot get up, come out their house and walk to their work because they cannot afford the property and they cannot afford the rental. So what's been happening in Spain to start all these anti-tourism protests? Well, it's not anti-tourism protests. It is basically the exact same as what I've been talking about. It's local people fed up of prices. Now, Barcelona are bringing in a cap on the tourism thing tourism licences, and I think it's about time that that was done anyway. Now, when they build hotels, they have a hotel cap in any given city. But I can talk from Edinburgh. When I started working in Edinburgh, you know, 20 years ago, in the floor restoration business that I had, there wasn't any Airbnbs. When I left Edinburgh in 2020, there were over 15,000 Airbnbs. Now, there's a lot of people in the centre of Edinburgh were complaining about the fact that the old town was no longer the old town of Edinburgh. It had been overrun by people from outside. You say, well, that can only be a good thing. But it's not. Because what then happens is, is the local population aren't there full time. Now, it's OK you have an Airbnb rental and you rent it out every weekend. It gives you a nice income. Fair play to you. But when 20 or 30 houses all do that in the same street, as happened in Edinburgh, you then have a situation where local news agents, local shops can't sustain their business because there isn't enough full-time population. And then it puts the price of rents up in the area. It puts the price of rents up massively. And that's what I want to talk about next about Torrevieja. Now one thing that you don't see here in Torrevieja often, or at all now, is the good old Sia Killer sign. Yep, for rent. You just don't see it at all. Next time you're here, have a walk around, look at the apartments, and tell me if you find a Sea Aquila sign. Now let's talk about an area that I know from experience. Now, up here is our old apartment. Yes, our old lovely apartment. And we paid 700 euros a month for that apartment and that 
tiny balcony. Now, the day that we moved out, we hadn't even moved out. The landlord came in, put the Sierra Killer sign up, and wanted 900 euros a month. Yes, 900 euros a month more than the 700 we were paying. And they never even done anything to it, and it was an old Spanish property. Now that's a massive increase in just two years. Yes, just two years. And it's not just that property in particular. There's another property that we went to view two years ago, and that was priced at 650 euros per month. It is now up for rent for 1,200 a month in Torrebeca. Now whilst the town may be changing on a daily basis, and yes, this is a new road layout, and there is a massive investment going on in the town. This road will take you into the new area that hopefully will be open in December. But what all these prices, price increases do do is it takes away the ability for local people to be able to rent near where they work. So a lot of people now stay on the outskirts of town and they have to travel in. And you're going to say, well, big deal. It's the way of the world. It's the way of the world and a road to nowhere. As you can see, this is the new road that will take you out the back of the harbour area once it's all open. So it's more to say that the sensationalism of the UK media to suggest that Spain has all of a sudden become anti-tourist is one of the biggest fabrications of the truth of the whole story. Let's be honest. The fact is, is local people are suddenly fed up in all the tourist areas around Spain of not being able to afford property. And that is the biggest issue. One of the biggest issues that locals do come across is that inability to be able to rent a property where you stay. They're getting priced out the market. And it's not just in Spain, this is happening all over. So am I for, am I for or against Airbnb? Well, there's one part of me that's for it because I'm all for the working man to be able to make as much money as they can. But at the same time, what is happening here in Spain and other tourist destinations, not just in Spain, but in the UK, is that you're getting companies buying up properties. Airbnb was meant to be brought into effect so that people can rent out their spare room. They can rent it out as an Airbnb to make some extra money. But what you now get is people buying a number of properties to rent out as Airbnbs. And that there lies the problem. So is Spain anti-tourist? Most definitely not. The Spanish media and the Spanish government will tell you that Spain wants to knock France off the number one tourist destination in Europe. Yes, this year it has a target of over 100 million tourists it wants to pass through the airports in Spain. And up until March this year, it was ahead of schedule and it will do it. Tourism means a lot to Spain. Tourism is massive all around the world, not just Spain. But there's a lot of other industries in Spain. So don't be fooled by the narrative. Don't be fooled by the narrative that Spain needs your money. And please don't be one of these people that say, without the pound, Spain would be nothing. Because it's not true. Look at the demographics of Torrevieja, and that will tell you. So let's face it, the flea market here in Torrevieja wouldn't be open if it wasn't for tourists. Because let's face it, it's definitely not locals that are buying down here anytime soon. Far from it. There's lots of other tourists from different destinations. So whilst the town might be changing and the demographics may be changing, there's one thing that will always continue. It's tourism. The town was built on tourism. The, built, the town was built on the fishing industry. It doesn't sustain the town anymore. Whether it be it national tourists from Madrid that overtake the city <laughs> on, a, on a pilgrimage from Madrid down to the coast every summer and every bank holiday or whether it be 
international tourists that are buying up holiday homes. And that's a different thing completely. And especially in Torreveca when at one part there's over 7,000 new properties being built in the one area. Then in Playa Flamenca there are 3,000 homes being built on an area that was always meant to be a natural park. But it's not now. It's been built on and it's going to produce another 3,000 homes. So when the media says to you, Spain's anti-tourist, look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture will tell you that's not really. And anyway, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to check out the next video, it is all about a place that is close by to Torre Vega, it's about half an hour drive. And I'll put that video up here on the screen now. Hasta luego.